We are gearing up for Crimes of Grindelwald, and we know you obsessed Harry Potter fans are too. We dug deep into the Harry Potter universe to find those rare and not-so-rare moments that meet up in Fantastic Beasts. Watch to the end to find out a huge spoiler you may have missed in the final trailer. You're a wizard, Harry. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to never miss another video, and be sure to check out our community section for even more fun. Now let's unpack 10 moments when Fantastic Beasts meets Harry Potter World in new movies. Gellert Grindelwald We'll start off with the movie's namesake. It only makes sense to lead with our lead, who appeared in both the Harry Potter series and Fantastic Beasts. Gellert Grindelwald first appeared briefly in The Sorcerer's Stone when Harry Potter purchases some wizarding sweets on the Hogwarts Express, including some chocolate frogs. We see Grindelwald on the back of Albus Dumbledore's chocolate frog card as the dark wizard that Dumbledore defeated in 1945. However, we later learn in the Deathly Hallows that Grindelwald was more than just the dark wizard to Dumbledore. They were like total frenemies. A young Grindelwald and Dumbledore had made plans to lead a wizarding revolution. However, after altercation between himself, his brother, and Grindelwald, Dumbledore parted ways, while Gelbert went on to build his army. He was eventually defeated by Dumbledore and locked up in the very prison he built to hold those who opposed him, Nurmengard. It was there many years later where he defiantly lied to Voldemort about never having possessed the Elder Wand, a move Dumbledore could only hope was his attempt to make amends. Jeez, boys, can you tone down the drama? Albus Dumbledore An even more obvious character appearing in both franchises is a certain headmaster of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. In the second Fantastic Beasts movie, we will see Albus Dumbledore, who has not yet taken the position of headmaster. After his falling out with Grindelwald, he summons Newt Scamander for help. He felt as though he himself would not be able to take on his former friend. Newton had been a student of Dumbledore's at Hogwarts. When threatened with expulsion, Dumbledore had his back. Whether Newt's expulsion was enforced or not is unknown, but Dumbledore succeeded in at least allowing Newt to keep his wand. So we know Dumbledore had a soft spot for Newt and could rely on him to help take down Grindelwald. It was rumored that Newt traveled to Paris on Dumbledore's orders, which reached the British Ministry of Magic. A delegation was sent to Hogwarts Castle to question Dumbledore, so it seems the student with all the pets ended up the teacher's pet. Clever, eh? We thought so. Nagini. Nagini. We see Nagini many times throughout the Harry Potter series as what is first assumed to be simply Voldemort's pet snake. He used her to do his bidding, attacking those who opposed him or got in his way. She had other purposes as well, one being her venom used as part of a potion in order to regain the V-Men's strength. However, we later find out in The Half-Blood Prince that she is also a Horcrux which explains the strong bond between herself and her owner. During the Second Wizarding War, Nagini had to be destroyed in order for Valdi to finally be defeated, and we all remember who sliced her in half, right? We may not have expected it, but Neville Longbottom came through for Harry Potter in the end. Now, if you're avoiding spoilers, you may want to turn down your volume for this next part. When we meet Nagini in the Harry Potter series, she is seemingly trapped in snake form, but as we will learn in Fantastic Beasts, the crimes of Grindelwald, she once had the ability to transform from human to snake at will. We could go on about her origin story and which important character brought her to Grindelwald, but that's enough of a spoiler for now. Don't be salty. Oh yeah, you hardcore Potter fans can turn your volume back up. Let's imagine. Okay, we must admit that these three are just guesses, but we can't be the only ones hoping to see, at the very least, a cameo in an upcoming Fantastic Beast movie. And it turns out we aren't. Cinema Blend com dropped these brilliant characters into our minds with their guesses on who could appear in future Fantastic Beasts movies. First up, Tom Riddle. Sure, he wasn't even a twinkle in his unloving father's eye during the time Fantastic Beasts and where to find them would have occurred, but as Cinema Blend mentions, what if the storyline were to jump ahead a few years into the future and place Newt Scamander in the path of a very young Tom? Also, would it make sense for Aberforth Dumbledore to make an appearance? It would certainly be an opportunity 
opportunity for us to get to know the headmaster's brother a bit better. Newt could encounter Aberforth at the Hog's Head while visiting Hogwarts. And thirdly, Bathilda Bagshot. She may seem like a random addition to this list, but she may also be the most appropriate character included here to grace the Fantastic Beasts movies with an appearance. Like Newt Scamander, she also contributed to Hogwarts by penning one of the textbooks the students study titled A History of Magic. What do you think? Would these characters make sense in the Fantastic Beasts world? Let us know in the comments. The Pensive the Pensive is an enchanted basin that allows its owner to experience and store memories before they are forgotten. We are first introduced to this in the Goblet of Fire, when Harry accidentally looked inside and found himself watching a series of trials and sentencings. The Pensive continues to appear throughout the Potter series as a flashback narrative device. The Pensive doesn't exactly appear in the Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, but the idea is utilized in the Death Cell scene, where Newt and Tina have been sentenced to death by the Magical Congress of the United States of America. Executioners would use a memory extraction spell to draw out fond memories from the condemned and cast them into a pool filled with death potion. The pool would replay these memories just like a pensive while the condemned were slowly lowered into the potion while hovering in a chair. The potion was highly corrosive and would burn the chair and whoever sat in it. A bit of an overkill, don't you think? Newt Scamander and Tina Goldstein were led here by the executioners in order to carry out the sentence imposed by Percivio Graves, who was really Grindelwald disguised as Graves. They were saved at the very last second by Queenie Goldstein and Jacob Kowalski, with one of Newt's amazing beasts, a swooping evil. Phew! Merlin's Beard Okay, after the heavy death cell talk, we need to lighten things up with a fun one. As dark as Fantastic Beasts and Harry Potter can get, we still enjoy the whimsy and fun our favorite author and screenwriter J.K. Rowling gives us. The Wizard of Arthurian legend was one of the most celebrated of all time. The Wizarding World even has the Order of Merlin to honor wizarding kind. Merlin's beard, she's perfect. The expression Merlin's beard can be heard in both Harry Potter and Fantastic Beast movies. It is the same as saying OMG. In Muggle language, you can hear different variations of the term in the Harry Potter series depending on who is saying it. At one point, Merlin's pants is uttered as well as Merlin's most baggy wifronts, said by Ron Weasley. Um, we aren't sure what that one means, but we're not going to try to find out. And almost everyone from the Ministry of Magic blurted out Merlinisms regularly. Newt is heard using the phrase in Fantastic Beasts, as well as Horace Slughorn and Cedric Diggory. So we can assume innocent version is more commonly used by the older generation. We've been having fun coming up with new ways of saying Merlin's beard over here at The Things. How would you say it? Show us in the comments and keep watching to find out what crazy spoiler Fantastic Beasts revealed in its final trailer. Hogwarts, we've already mentioned you'll be seeing a younger and very handsome, we must add, Albus Dumbledore in the upcoming Fantastic Beasts movie. What we have yet to mention is that the story will be traveling across the pond to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. It should go without saying that the Hogwarts does appear in every Harry Potter movie, but if you didn't know that, what are you doing watching this video? Go watch the movies! Back at Hogwarts, we get to see a young Dumbledore teach a young Newt to face his Dementor, which is a desk. In the second trailer for Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, Newt reveals his biggest fear is having to work in an office. Maybe muggles and wizards aren't so different after all. Think about it. If us muggles Muggles get tired and grumpy from sitting behind a boring desk in a boring office at a boring job every boring day. Wouldn't you think that wizards would find it drab and undesirable as well? Or imagine the complete opposite of boring. Like when Harry, Ron, and Hermione snuck into the Ministry of Magic to steal one of Voldemort's horcruxes. They took polyjuice potion to take the form of three unsuspecting employees. It was so intense, we couldn't imagine ourselves taking that sort of risk. No way! Give us a job flipping burgers any day. Fleamont Potter Fantastic Beast is the type of film that has so much going on. It is way too easy to miss the little things Unless you are a professional Potter fan, you may have missed this fun easter egg. Did you know Harry Potter's grandfather actually makes an appearance in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? It's true, though if you blinked, you for sure missed it. During the opening sequence of the first Fantastic Beasts movie, we see a fast-moving montage of newspapers informing us of Grindelwald's rise. We see the New York ghosts with their headline, Grindelwald attacks intensify risking war with no homage. And the Daily Prophet 
helped with Hogwarts School increases security. If you pause just at the right moment, you can find fun little articles and advertisements on the front pages. For instance, in the US newspaper, we read that wand permit renewal is mandatory for all American wizards. The Daily Prophet includes an article about Fleamont's potion wooing American wizards. Fleamont Potter came from an already wealthy family, who, after graduating as a Gryffindor from Hogwarts, became a potioneer and created Sleek Easy's hair potion. The slogan was, two drops tame even the most bothersome Barnet. It was a good potion too! It was noted on the label as being suitable for all hair types, and it was particularly effective at taming bushy, unruly hair. However, the label did caution against use of the product by redheads, warning it would have unique results for them. Hermione Granger apparently used this potion, and a lot of it, for the Yule Ball in the Goblet of Fire. It is said that Fleamont Potter's hair potion was so successful, this was how Harry Potter inherited all his gold. Didn't think your mom and dad would leave you with nothing though, did you? Nicholas Flamel Nicholas Flamel is one of the most influential characters in the first Harry Potter story, yet never actually made an appearance in the movie, except for a brief mention of his name. J.K. Rowling describes him as a historical character who lived in France in the 14th century and is supposed to have discovered how to make a philosopher's stone. This makes him capable of producing the elixir of life, granting him mortality. The danger of the stone's existence was brought to light when Voldemort was nearly successful in stealing it in order to restore himself to physical form. We all know what happened next. Harry, Ron, and Hermione kicked some major V-duty booty. Flamel and Dumbledore both agreed the stone should be destroyed. Although Flamel and his wife's lives would not last much longer once the stone was destroyed, we are happy to go back in time to Fantastic Beasts. We see him in the trailer for the upcoming Fantastic Beasts in a fun scene with Newt Scamander and our comical muggle Jacob Kowalski, who mistook him for a ghost. Letta Lestrange Okay, here it is, people. If you haven't already done your research, prepare to have your mind blown. First, let's get to know Letta Lestrange just a little bit more. She is the woman in the picture that Newt Scamander carries around and who Queenie asks about. From this scene, we learn they were friends in school. We don't know how their friendship ended, just that Newt was deeply hurt by it. If you find the name Lestrange familiar, you should. Bellatrix Black married into the Lestrange family. Her husband, Rodolphus Lestrange, is thought by some to be either a direct descendant or indirect descendant of Letta Lestrange. And that's not all. The final trailer for the upcoming Fantastic Beasts movie drops a huge clue. Alright, for those who want to avoid spoilers, here is your warning. In the trailer, there is a split second glance at a distant chart. It's only pictured for a moment while an unknown character standing in a dimly lit room inspects a wall filled with what looks like graffiti. But if you zoom in on the scene, you'll find that it's a family tree of sorts. And, wait for it, it connects the tortured Obscurial Credence bare bone to none other than Letta Lestrange. Mute. You never met a monster you couldn't love. According to the chart, both Credence and Letta are the children of Corvus Lestrange, but by different mothers, making them half-siblings. So you tell us, were you surprised by any of these, or are you one of the top elite pro potters who knows it all? Do you have any guesses as to who else may be visiting Fantastic Beasts from the Harry Potter world? Let us know in the comments. And that's it for 10 moments when Fantastic Beasts meets Harry Potter world in the new movies. Thanks for watching, see you next time!